This happened one night a few years back. I was a student at the time. I was working at a convenience store trying to save some cash for university. I was living with my parents. I walked a couple miles back home from my part-time job at the convenience store. I would usually get picked up, but my parents were out on a date. The fog was thick that night, and there was no one on the streets. It was a perfect autumn night. I was wrong, though. I noticed after about ten minutes that someone was walking behind me. I didn't pay it much mind, but when this person was taking every turning that I was taking on my route home, I grew concerned. I looked over my shoulder while crossing the road to see that the owner of those footsteps behind me was a man. I turned into my street and up to my house, and I was grateful to hear him turn off in another direction. It was quite foggy that night. The street lights were lit early, and since I had worked a long shift, I went over to the mailbox before going inside. I was expecting something. At that point in my life, I hadn't really had any paranormal experiences or been in the line of any inherent danger. That all changed that night, though. While checking the mailbox, something appeared from the corner of my eye that made me turn to the right and face it. At first, I thought that my eyes were playing tricks on me. Then, I quickly realized that there was a figure at the other side of the street. I was fairly certain it was a man. Not the guy from before. I prayed. It was strange because he was just standing there, completely still, and I guessed that he was staring right at me. My fight or flight reflex kicked in, and I quickly made my way to the front door, with the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. I inherently knew that there was something off about this situation, and I needed to get out. I unlocked the door, turned to have a last look, and I nearly fainted. The man was now at the end of my driveway. I needed to get inside. I needed to get behind a locked door. Once inside, I looked through the window, and he was gone. I was trembling in fear. I couldn't see where this guy was, and I couldn't decide whether or not to go turn the lights on. But I just continued to periodically check the window. I almost jumped out of my skin when my neighbor's dog started barking loudly. I was really frightened. My blood froze in my veins as I heard footsteps. Hearing footsteps approaching my front door, I ran, covering my mouth to prevent myself from screaming, and I looked through the peephole. The outdoor sensor light wasn't on, but I could see well enough due to the street lights, and it was light outside due to the fog. Barely breathing, I stared through the peephole and gasped in fear when a dark shadow appeared. I was sure it was that man. He had his hood pulled over his head, and he was now inches away from the door. Instinctively, I flipped the light switch and went back to look through the peephole. He was gone again. I raced around the house, turning every light on, while trying to find my phone. I was in such a panic I had no idea where I put my handbag. I was shaking in terror as I crept into the kitchen and I grabbed a knife from the knife block. The dogs had stopped barking and for a moment I thought that that man had gone to silence them. I was too frightened to look out of the window now. But then, then I heard my neighbor's voice yelling. I was saved. I won't repeat the language he used, but he made sure that creep was off of our property. He came over, and when I was certain that that man was gone, I opened the door. We spoke for a while, and he calmed me down. I even asked him to check all the rooms in the house. I was a bit embarrassed, but I cannot tell you how shook up I was. It seemed like hours had passed before my parents got home. I explained it all to them, and they told me I needed to make a statement to the police in the morning. After one more check on all the windows, I went to bed. Early the next morning, at around 2am, something woke me up and I sat bolt upright, straining my ears. The silence was deafening. I could hear my beating heart in my ears. It was aching with anxiety. I felt for sure that that man was back. I checked the windows nothing. I stayed up until the dawn. I never saw him again, and I don't really want to either. 
the whole experience terrified me. I always make sure the doors are locked no matter where I go, and ever since then, I've been afraid of the fog too. This happened last summer, and it still sends shivers up my spine when I think back to it. I was traveling for business. I had to take something to one of our laboratories. It had to be there that night to be used in the morning, so I was gunning it along the express highway. I was passing by Mount Fuji and about to enter a toll road. I didn't want to do this as I didn't want to pay. Plus, I thought that if I took a detour, I might be able to shave a few minutes off the estimated arrival time. Boy, was I wrong. I turned down a road close to Aokigahara. You know that famous forest, right? I slowed down a little on this road, as I was approaching a fog bank. It was plain sailing for a while, until my lights abruptly cut out. I pulled into the hard shoulder and hit my hazards. I was really frustrated. I guessed that a fuse had blown or something. I popped the hood and started playing around, trying desperately to fix it, but when I realized I was probably causing more harm than good, I slammed the hood shut. I considered driving without the lights, even if it wasn't a foggy night, which it was. It was an idiotic idea. I slumped in the driver's seat at a loss. I didn't know what I could do next. Suddenly I was struck with tinnitus. You know that terrible ringing in your ears? It was awful. It made me feel sick. I had never had it this bad before. I looked up and noticed something in my rear view mirror. There was a shadowy figure stood behind my car. The moment I laid eyes on that shadow, I heard something. The roar of some kind of animal. This happened at around half two in the morning, so there is no good reason why anyone would be out here on the mountain roads that late, and what I saw in the mirror was definitely humanoid. I was surrounded by thick, dense forest, for as far as the eye could see. There wasn't a single car on the road either. I had never felt so alone. I heard the sound of footsteps running around my car. They were audible even though my engine was on. I could feel something coming for me. I felt surrounded and trapped. Those awful footsteps grew louder and louder, and I had to get out of there. I was thinking about opening my door and running for it. I could imagine not getting far. Then I'd be a missing person. They'd find my car out here, and I'd become an unsolved mystery. Just as I was thinking about seeing my parents being interviewed on TV, I heard something strike the rear window of the car. It wasn't a rock or anything, it sounded sticky, like something fleshy had landed there. I did not want to see what was back there, so I dragged my rear view mirror out of position and hit the gas. I was driving straight into the fog with no lights. Just as I was about to enter a tunnel up ahead, the lights suddenly came back on. I was so relieved. I reached the next toll booth up ahead. And I swear to God, that was the only time in my life I was happy to see one of those things. The lights of the toll booth were so comforting after that experience. I felt safe. After a little while longer, I pulled into a convenience store to get a coffee and check over my car. My car was covered in morning dew since I had been driving through that fog. The windows were wet. I went to the rear of my car and stopped in my tracks. There were so many handprints of varying sizes on the glass. Since that incident, I have never tried to avoid toll roads to find shortcuts. I have no explanation for the handprints or what made that horrible roaring sound. But I don't like it. I don't like to think about the number of people who go missing around here either. I love mountain hiking, it's one of my favorite hobbies, but for some reason, every time that I have tried to hike one specific mountain, I have always been struck with rain and heavy fog. The mountain range I'm talking about is called Hyakukendaira. This story takes place in the autumn of 1990. Myself and two of my good friends were hiking on the mountain range that day 
when thick fog rolled in. The mountain range is really wide, and there are tons of boulders and rocks which serve as obstacles. They pile up on one another, making it near impossible to navigate in fog. I couldn't really see much of anything. It was cold too. The fog had brought a chill to the air. The hike seemed eternal. It was taking forever to get to our next marker. One of my friends started to complain that he felt sick, so we all decided to use the opportunity to take a breather. We were joking around and saying that we must have strayed from the right route, pointing fingers of blame, but in a funny way. We were good friends. I took my rucksack off and went to sit on a mound of rocks. I wanted to get to a slightly higher vantage point to see if I could make anything out. Fog was too thick though. As I sat there I heard a loud noise. I thought that it was a bird calling as it flew overhead. You can see some pretty big birds on this mountain range, providing it isn't foggy of course. I started snacking on some cookies and drinking my water, while looking at the map. I had a vague understanding of where we were. I was about to tell the guys when I heard a noise coming from below me. It came from under the rocks. I couldn't believe it so I shot to my feet to take a look. I climbed down a little and looked through a gap in the rocks to see something. I squinted and there was the dark outline of something lying in there on the rocks. I didn't know what it was, I couldn't make it out clearly due to the fog. My eyes took time to adjust to the gloomy conditions. Then I saw it. It was a person. A head. A person's head whose eyes had been sewn shut. A long time ago I might add. The body seemed almost mummified. I remember the teeth were brown and I could see parts of the neck bones. I screamed, and my friends came over. I told them what I had seen. They looked for themselves, between the rocks, and confirmed. My friend who already felt sick was way worse now. I felt guilty. We left the area immediately and headed back down the mountain. We moved faster than we did on the way up. We were pretty quiet. All the joking had disappeared. The fog, on the other hand, hadn't. Despite the fog, we got down the mountain in record time. I spoke to the mountain ranger, and he called in the police to take a look. The policemen took my statement about what I had seen. I must have sounded crazy, but they didn't treat me like an idiot. I was second guessing myself a bit though, but I knew what I had seen. I knew that I saw eyelids sewn shut, and so did my friends. But when the police came back after investigating with the mountain ranger, they said that what was between the boulders was an unidentifiable skull. They said that they couldn't even be sure that it was human. It wasn't a skull, it was a head, and it had flesh, I know it did. Anytime I go near that place, it always rains, and if not, fog rolls in. I'm not scared of it, it's just a mad phenomenon, or a series of incredible coincidences. Either way, it's an incident I'll never forget. This happened about a year ago. The area I work in in the winter months is often covered in a thick fog at night. I guess it's because it's up in the mountains. The narrow roads are always dark and the fog always makes me nervous when driving. The visibility is very poor out there. I really hate driving home late. Work finished that night at around half past two in the morning. This wasn't anything out of the ordinary as I worked night shifts. Just as I expected the fog was thick and when I left the parking lot, I could barely see the road in front of my headlights. I knew that the mountain roads were going to be difficult. I had been driving for about five minutes and I was already trying to figure out what to eat for dinner slash breakfast. It was at this point I realized that I left my wallet in my locker. I had to go back for it. I found an area to make a U-turn and I saw the corpse of a raccoon. Sadly, up in the mountains there are many raccoons and stray cats and it's always sad to see them by the side of the road. It had obviously been ran over by a car, 
I couldn't really blame the driver in this weather. The fog gets so thick. I'm just glad that it's never happened to me. I don't know how I would cope. I'd feel so guilty. I made it back to work, scanned my keycard, got in, grabbed my wallet, and in a matter of moments, I was back on the road again, heading in the same direction I came from. My mobile phone started ringing. It wasn't uncommon for friends to call me this late, and my best friend was a bit of a night owl. I pulled over in the same spot. I made my U-turn to answer his call. The fog lights illuminated the raccoon's body. I didn't like it, so I turned them down a little. I saw something big moving in the field by the side of the road, only a few meters away from the raccoon. I couldn't make out what it was since the fog was so thick, but to me it looked like a huge human, bigger than the everyday man. It was awkwardly jerking forward in a strange manner. I completely forgot about my friend calling. I couldn't take my eyes off of this thing. It was about to leave the field and enter the road ahead of me. It was faintly illuminated by my headlights now. It looked like a massive crab. I know as well as you that such a thing does not exist in the natural world. But let me try to describe it to you. Its torso was wide. It had two ovals protruding from its body and long, thin legs carrying it forward. I was staring at this thing, completely shocked and horrified. It suddenly moved quickly and lunged on the raccoon. It then passed in front of my car and disappeared with it into the fog. Its movement was very similar to a crab. Its shape was too, but that wasn't no crab. It was a person, well, it was humanoid, and it was oddly pale. It looked like a deformed human, like someone had cut two people in half and sewn them back together facing opposite directions. The oval shapes were human head-like, and the way it carried itself forward was on all fours, like the legs of a spider. I know it sounds crazy, but I saw it. I avoid that road completely now. I don't care if I get home later, I just won't go anywhere near it. I read a while back that a high school student went missing in that area. I worry about what happened to him. I really hope he's found soon. This happened in June, in my second year of university. Back then I joined a wildlife conservation group. We were to hike to the summit of Mount Takanosu, known as the Falcon's Nest, to do some field research. We had to also collect data from the evacuation center, kind of like a ranger's hut there too. Next year in the summer, I took some of the new club members on the same hike. There were three of them and me. And we climbed the mountain in the morning and set off back down the mountain at around lunchtime. In order for them to learn the route, I let them lead us back down the mountain. The weather was fine, lovely blue skies for as wide as the eye could see, birds chirping, and there was even a nice cool breeze blowing towards us. I loved the sound of the birds, I was trying to identify them as I walked. As we went down the ridge, we came across an area I liked to take a break at. There was an abandoned house there, I thought the new guys would get a kick out of it. And there was also a kind of clay pipe, one meter in diameter, outside of it like an entrance to a well, but on its side. I guess this was how the house in the past got its water. This spot always had great sun exposure and had an amazing view. We approached the abandoned house and we began taking off our backpacks to take a rest. One of the guys asked, Did you see that? I swear I saw a woman in there. I replied, I didn't see anything, plus this place is abandoned. No, not in the abandoned house, in, in the pipe. That piqued my interest, so I asked, Well, what does she look like? Look like an old lady dressed in blue. Was it just one person? Yeah, she just kind of, like, retracted into the pipe as we approached. I turned to the other guys with us and asked if they had seen anything. They both said that they hadn't. I think she might be, like, living in that abandoned house. Shall we go see if she's okay? We approached the abandoned house and looked in through the broken windows. And he even opened the door and called in there, but we found no one there. Your eyes are playing tricks on you. You must be pretty tired or something. There's no one here. 
No way, I could have sworn I saw her, he replied. Well, I didn't see her, I argued. We sat down to take a drink, but I could tell that he was slightly on edge. I decided to try and lighten the mood. Before long, we were back to chatting. After a while, the guys were reaching for their coats, and so was I. The temperature had suddenly dropped. Thick fog rolled in and brought a chill to the air. It came in so quickly, and it was all around us. The guy who said he had seen the old lady just bolted. He just ran down the mountain. I couldn't believe it. I was screaming at him to stop running. Running in the fog down a mountain trail can only end in injury, I thought. I quick walked after him, shouting at him to stay where he was, while simultaneously shouting at the others to follow me and bring his rucksack. This is exactly how people go missing on mountain ranges. They get separated. I was terrified that I lost him. I found him halfway down the trail, sat down and panting. I scolded him for running off like that. His face had gone completely pale, which was odd to see. If you've just been running, your face is usually red, right? I stopped the lecture and just asked him what was wrong. The fog was now clearing. I knew where we were. We were on the ridge just further down a little, from the abandoned house. I asked him what happened, but he wouldn't tell me right away. He just said that he got scared and he ran. I thought that there might be something more than that, so I probed a bit more. He admitted at a later date that he had an intense fear of the fog, and it felt like if he stayed in it, he would be killed. I don't know what brought that on in him, but I think it must be related to seeing that old lady in the house. If I was to concoct a theory, I'd say something happened to her in that house, either in the fog or like a gas inhalation kind of thing. I'm just guessing that. We have no idea why the fog suddenly appeared. I've climbed that mountain many times since, and I've never seen the fog appear and disappear so suddenly. I've even climbed it at night. Nothing. It's something I don't think I'll ever be able to explain.